Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here, and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today, we're going to take a look at setting up an iPhone 5 model and animating the screen images. So, hopefully, that can be useful for commercials or bumpers or whatever. Who knows? I don't, obviously. But the good news is we're giving away this iPhone 5 model for free so you can download it uh, from the project file. And I mean free, not like, congratulations, you just want an iPhone, click here, you know. Not that kind of free, but like real free. I'm talking about download it right now, start using it. It's an OBJ file, so you can use it with uh, pretty much any 3D program. You can uh, load it up, you know, edit it, whatever. Now, we're going to be using it with our After Effects plugin Element 3D. So you can check that out. It allows you to, you know, import 3D models and stuff into After Effects. And the best part is it's really fast. So we're going to be able to do animations and, you know, really refine this in, in a lot of cool ways. So once you download the iPhone 5 model, what you want to do is put that in your My Models folder. Now it comes with an OBJ and an MTL file. So if you import this into Cinema 4D, and 3D Max, you know, the textures will be set up and there's a diffuse and a specular and then the screen by itself. All right, let's go and jump back to After Effects. We're going to create a new composition. And just a quick heads up, my housekeeper is doing a little bit of vacuuming, so if it's a little noisy, I apologize in advance. And just to be clear, by housekeeper, I mean my wife. Uh, so we'll hit OK. And if I keep talking like this, it'll be my ex-wife. Uh, just kidding. Uh, in all seriousness, uh, she's doing a bang up job. So uh, keep up the good work, honey. A little shout out for you in the tutorial, not too shabby. Uh, so we're going to add element to our scene. And then when we go into our scene setup, we can come over here to the My Models folder. And we have an iPhone 5 folder. So we can click on that. And now we've got our iPhone 5. So that's really all you have to do. You can turn off draft textures so that uh, you can kind of get close to it, but uh, it's not a bad model. It's got uh, some good detail, and uh, so very, very cool. So we'll just hit OK. And uh, then on the After Effects side, we can create a camera. Maybe yeah, that's good. And then if we take the Orbit tool, we can, you know, orbit around this. So that's pretty straightforward. We could create a quick background, or actually, I'm just going to cheat. I'm going to just steal it from my previous project here. Oh man, sorry, but we gotta move things along. You know, I gotta probably help take out the trash in a minute. We gotta, you know, we gotta work together. It's teamwork. Part of being married is team. Honey, I'm busy. Yeah, I said I would do it in a second. Um, what was I talking about, teamwork? You know what, let's talk about that later. Uh, what we're gonna do is create a new uh, adjustment layer and do some color correction. Nice. So just a little bit of contrast there, and uh, this looks nice. So how can we actually animate what's on the screen? Well, here's the cool thing about Element. If we go into the scene setup, we can uh, check out the model, and we see that there's two separate materials. There's the body, which is the iPhone, and then we have the screen, which is a completely separate material. So if we were to look at, say, our 3D version of it in 3D Max, we click over here on the uh, material and we have what's called a multi-object material. So basically, we have a separate material applied to part of the model. And to illustrate that a little bit better, if I select these faces and, say, take another material and apply it, what I've done is I've applied a completely new material to just that surface. So if I went to that material and, you know, changed the color, it would update. And then if I export this model as an OBJ, so I choose export, select an OBJ and and resave this, Element will actually register that as a separate material and create it in the list. So then we can go to that material and edit it ourselves. So we could you know, tint it and we could, you know, do some adjustments to it. Now, currently, we're using an image as the screen. So it's not animated, it's just a still image. But what if we actually wanted that to be animated? Well, here's what we can do. Like, for example, I had this element demo reel which shows some different cool things that uh, can be created 
with the plugin. And let's say that I want to make this on the iPhone screen. Like, why wouldn't you? Here's what we can do. We can come back over to that iPhone folder and actually import that image. So if we bring that in, what this allows us to do is create a comp that's exactly the same size as the screen and it's not distorted. So we'll take it, then we'll go to the element layer, go down to custom layers and set a custom texture map as that layer, as the iPhone screen. And just to make sure that we are looking at the right screen, I want to take this and pre-compose it. So we'll choose layer, pre-compose, it may be cut off at the bottom there, just uh, pre-compose and leave all the attributes. And if we leave all the attributes, it will stay the exact same size. Then if we open it up, we have a comp that's the same size as the screen. Then this is the cool part. We can take anything we want. We can take our video, put it out there, maybe rotate it, scale it up. And now it looks like you know our video is on the screen. So now what we want to do is map this onto the iPhone screen. So we'll go into element, open up the scene setup, and then on the screen layer, what we have set up is the illumination channel. So the illumination channel makes it so that if there are no lights in our scene, it's still illuminated from, uh, you know, from the backlight. So we'll go into that illumination map slot and we can change the texture. So we could load an image or we can set one of our custom layers. So if we click on that, now we've loaded that into our screen layer. Um, very cool. Another quick thing is that we can change the environment reflection. So we could do a studio, you know, background, which just has some nice specular hits and we could hit OK. So now we've got some animation on our screen and at the same time, check this out, we can animate our camera. So hit PA and then we can keyframe the position and anchor point here and just orbit the camera around. And so now we've got this nice little animation. Um, we could do some fun stuff like take the iPhone, uh, let's say the particle look, go in here and you know we can change the size of the iPhone and rotate it and stuff like that. One thing I might do is animate the Y rotation. So I just turned on the stopwatch and then you know set this up to say 360. So like a one single revolution. And then I can select those, hit F9. And what I might do is right in the middle of this spin, I'll go into the iPhone comp and let's cut the video. So you can, let's see, edit, split layer. And then I'm going to take this and slide it over, you know, to this orange thing. And then we'll trim the clip. We'll just bring in the end point. And so we're just doing like an edit. We're cutting the video right there. Now what we've done is we've cut it right as it's faced away from the camera. So when it turns around, it'll be something different. So we can use this as a way to, you know, edit in different looks, um, you know, and, and, and do perfectly timed edits. We can even do something, you know, we could do something fun like take the element layer and maybe animate the rotation so that, let's just move some keyframes here and then rotate it, let's see, sideways. And this way it looks right and then it flips over and now it's upright. We could turn motion blur on for the layer. We've got some nice, some nice uh, motion blur. And one other cool tip is if you go into the render settings, you can actually rotate the environment. So if you don't like the way it's reflecting or it's not quite popping, you know, the way that you like, just go in there, tweak the, you know, the position of the rotation and uh, and you're good to go. And likewise, you can go into the output. So this is really important too. So you can go to the output and change the multipass. You can turn the reflectivity up or down depending on, you know, how everything looks in your shot. And you can even go into the sampling and turn up super sampling and you might see, you know, the edges might look a little bit jagged or if they flicker, you can come down here to the super sampling and turn that up to 2. And that'll usually smooth things out pretty good without slowing uh, the rendering down too much.
Very, very cool. And uh, if you're feeling fancy, you can uh, do some stuff like turn on the particle replicator. What I've done is I've set it to a ring and, you know, just turned on a few iPhone copies and uh, things can get a little bit wild, as you can tell here. But uh, anyway, that is the idea. All right. Well, anyway, hopefully you guys found this useful. I know, you know, people doing commercials, you know, everybody wants to talk about, you know, Twitter and Facebook, and this is a good thing to be able to put on screen with your website. Now, personally, some companies really overdo it with the social marketing, so just try to take it easy, um, you know, and, and more importantly, be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter because we like to throw out some project files and cool tips and, you know, just waste a lot of time, but if you're going to follow anybody, you might as well follow us. Uh, all right, that worked out pretty nicely, tied it in there at the end, uh, very good. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. My name is Andrew Kramer, and we will see you next time.